this is Jeff Bell, who is a clinical professor at Dominican University, who provides a very practical perspective on manufacturing, because he's also the owner of a precision machine business, uh, and that is Art Precision. And he's also the co-author of the McGraw-Hill book, Factory Physics for Managing, How Leaders Improve Performance in a Post-Lean Six Sigma World. And we were able to get autographed copies of the book today. So first of all, let us welcome Jeff Bell to the studio table. Welcome to the Doris Davenport Program and the WPNA studio. Well, thank you for having me. You are more than welcome. Now, I told you the last time that you were here that I want to read your book, but not until you explain that title. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you do that for us? Sure. Well, factory physics is a concept that was developed at Northwestern University in the mid-90s by Dr. Uh, Mark Spearman and Wally Hopp. Mm -hmm. And it was the cornerstone of the manufacturing program, the joint business school and engineering school manufacturing program um, there. And what they found out was, and there was a textbook that came out of it. We were sort of the student guinea pigs for it. More people in industry were buying the textbook than schools, and schools were buying a lot of them. Wow. So um, McGraw-Hill actually approached us to write the business book or the airport book, the one you grab when you're going through the airport, mm -hmm. to sort of uh, simplify it. And, and in essence, what the factory physics framework does is it explains the science of operation. Mm -hmm. Well, what is that? Well, essentially, there's, there's three elements. There's inventory, there's capacity, and there's time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough inventory, and if you don't have enough capacity, then people are going to wait. Mm -hmm. If you have too much, then you lose money because inventory and capacity cost money. But before you get into business, I always like to think about it in terms of people's lives. Have you ever been on a highway and you're cruising along and there's three lanes and all of a sudden you see that construction sign and it's going to go down to one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what happened to the capacity of that highway? It went from three lanes to one. Mm -hmm. You know, dropped by two-thirds. And what do you end up doing? Mad, getting mad. Waiting in line, right? <laughs> Start waiting in line. The response time goes. So, so it, the science of operations is like the science in, in, in physics in real life, I mean, you, you might not like the law of gravity, but you can't avoid it. If you walk off the top of this building, you know, you, you've got an issue. And so people experience this every day, whether they're on the highway or the one that, you know, an, another law is that variability always degrades performance. Um, and so, for instance, if you're behind uh, me and my three children, uh, Sean, Maeve, and Daniel at Dunkin' Donuts, and we're picking donuts, there's a lot of variability, you're going to end up waiting in line. Um, so. The basic concept in the book and of the science of operations is that if you can plan your portfolio of inventory, capacity, and time, you can make better decisions, drive profitable growth in your business, and that ultimately creates um, more manufacturing jobs, which is important to the West Side. And maybe just to sort of close on the business side of things, since I gave life examples, you remember a few years ago at Christmas when all the packages were late, UPS said, uh, if you get me your order by the 23rd, you know, through Amazon and other folks like that, mm -hmm. you'll have it by Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And then a whole lot of people didn't get their gifts on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I think it was 2013. Yep. Um, but yep. what happened is they didn't have enough capacity in terms of trucks and drivers, and they had some variability in terms of a snowstorm, and people's Christmas gifts were late. Right. Uh, but the other side of that is, the next year they said, we're not gonna have that problem again. And they put in all kinds of uh, capacity, and it was very interesting until January when the financials came. In 2014, they actually suffered, um, you know, loss in profit compared to the past because they raised so much capacity. And so, the trick really is getting the right portfolio of inventory, capacity, and time so that your businesses make money and, uh, and and grow. And maybe the last point on that, because I think people are seeing a lot today, is this whole same day delivery thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, actually, you're talking about employing people. If we, we same day deliver everything, you're gonna need a lot of drivers. But uh, there were some recent statistics that said, in fact, it was a final exam question that I just gave to my students. Only 29% of the people are really interested in paying for same-day delivery. Mm -hmm. So being interested in paying is not the same as actually being willing mm -hmm. to pay when the time comes to, to put it out. So what you have to do is figure out what's your business strategy and how do you make money. And then if you optimize, if you use the science of op operations to, to figure out the right portfolio of inventory capacity and customer service, then you can make money and, and create jobs, and, and, and that's really what, uh, that's what factory physics is, is all about. Well, that's pretty amazing. I mean, that is a very technical area, but it sounds like it's also very practical. 
and even the examples that you use. And when you think about uh, manufacturing, manufacturing is kind of like, um, what's the word I want to use? It's like growth. You know, once you have a plan and a process in place, it really is knowing that process and just following it each and every time. So it seems like it's something that's easily teachable. Well, no, and that's exactly right, and it's why it's so important that you use the science of operations and your intuition, your common sense. Like mm -hmm. You don't have to know the laws of gravity to know it's a bad idea to walk off a building. Mm -hmm. But because manufacturing growth, people do what we call initiative by imitation mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. That's a bad practice. Mm -hmm. If you know the science, you won't just imitate somebody else. Mm -hmm. You'll think, what works for me? And mm -hmm. actually in chapter one of the book, we talk about Boeing. And they spent a lot of money doing initiative by imitation to copy the Toyota production system. Mm -hmm. The Toyota production system is legendary and great for making cars. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the best thing as we talk about in the book for making airplanes. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that happens in operations is people do a lot of just copying because they heard a buzzword like lean or six sigma. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners probably are all that interested in the manufacturing terms. Mm -hmm. But it's a really important point you make that once you get it down, keep going with those practices. So you really need to understand what you're trying to do in the first place mm -hmm. so that you when you start repeating, you're repeating the right stuff and not just something you copied from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right, and, that, and, and as you mentioned um, in our conversation, it, it helps you to avoid the perils. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, tell us now, if you look at factory physics and its framework, it, it, it quantifies options for, what do you call it, portfolio of inventory? Yeah. Inventory, capacity, and time. Okay. Yep. And that's where you spend your money. So uh, mm -hmm. chapter eight is all about how we run our machining business, mm -hmm. right? And capacity is our people and machine. Sure. Time is the lead time we tell our customers you can have this in you know, three days or three weeks or mm -hmm. three months. Um, and the inventory is, is both the raw materials and then, of course, you know, if you go to the grocery store, they have inventory of milk right there, mm -hmm. so you, you don't have any waiting time. And if, and if you did, you'd probably go to a different different mm -hmm. grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, what the science allows you to do, and this is probably a little more than you want to get into um, on the radio, is just like you know, force equals mass times acceleration in physics, mm -hmm. there's something called Little's Law, which says cycle time equals your whip, which is essentially what's in the way, mm -hmm. over your throughput, which is how many you make every day. So you can actually quantitatively say, I'm going to get this product to you in three weeks, mm -hmm. and be right about it. But you have to do a little math Right. to support the science. Right. Well, eventually we are going to want to get into that on the radio. Not tonight, but we will.